deep conditioning. We got, I got something from Amazon today that I know I didn't order, so I don't know what it is. Somebody must have ordered it because I heard somebody knock on the floor. And bang, an Amazon box was sitting outside. So um, I don't know what it is. Uh, I guess we all going to find out together because uh, this is kind of mysterious. So we're going to find out what it is because I don't got a clue what it is. So, um, I guess we're gonna assemble this together and talk while we do it. How about that one? Hey. So, uh, it came with, like, a crap load of poles. This stuff and this. And so I don't know what it is, but we're gonna find out. Anyways, y'all, my day been lovely. I guess I can give y'all a mini tour of my home. So, I got blessed with all kinds of stuff the past few days. Y'all, there's a blessing in being a blessing to others. You give and gifts are given to you, pressed down, shaking together, running over, and they flow into your bosom by so many different people. So, I was on the verge of wanting to redecorate my home. And, uh, didn't have the funds to do it. There was all kinds of stuff that I wanted for it. So, somebody called me randomly one day, y'all. Let me pick up this tripod so I don't got to take the phone off of it. Somebody called me randomly, y'all, one day. And A said, hey, I'm coming over. I said, okay. So she came over and decided she wanted to go show y'all. Let me hide this. Y'all can't see it in. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, by the way, I don't edit videos. I give you everything in the raw. I don't go back and edit nothing, okay? We do it all live. We don't record and then send it out. No, we don't do that. So, um, let me hide that. <laughs> so, y'all, oh, gotta hide this too, because y'all can't see that either. It's nothing illegal, because we don't do nothing illegal. But certain things are not meant for your eyes to see. Okay, y'all. So I actually literally just got up and ate something. So I'm going to throw that in the box because the box is going to have to go outside to the garbage. So, y'all, okay. So for those of y'all who know Luther, no, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, the yeah, yeah is a very devout man of God. So I'm moving this over so I can give you the full view. All right. This woman done went out shopping, y'all. Yeah, my eyebrows look bad, but they'll be done few in a few shit, a little bit. So, um, I finally got my communion table. Yes, y'all see it. That is my ministry's license. I framed it up and put it on my communion table. Now, because I'm a vowed Nazarite, I can't literally touch regular grapes. So... I got grape Kool-Aid. This is my communion crackers. My prayer shawl in its little baggie straight from the land of Israel. And that's my new, look, y'all see it. Oh, I turn a little tripod. That is my footprints framed picture. Looks great, right? I love it. And that's my little table with all the significant things that come to me now flip now okay y'all i'm old school i'm 30 i have absolutely see absolutely no need for a flat screen tv when the tv i done had for years is more than sufficient so i'm not gonna go out and buy one no that's a waste of money I take care as a proper steward of the lord's money i don't just spend his money because i got it y'all I used to, though. I ain't gonna lie. So, there's my wall. And my other wall. And my TV. See? Look good, don't it? I don't, like I said, I ain't got no reason to go get out no freaking smart TV. I barely watch TV anyways. If I do, it's my Hulu. So, y'all know that in the Bible, Jesus is called the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. So that's my little lion picture. Okay, enough. Let's go finish this up. 
Um, just wanted to get a smile review. So I get a cat smile, y'all. He is coming home to Luther. He gonna be the king, the royal, the royal one in this house. Cause I ain't got no kids, y'all. So he gonna be spoiled to death, spoiled to life. He gonna have everything he a cat could ever want and more. So, oh, and I've already named him Tigger. <laughs> All right, now let's go back to the assembly. Y'all gotta paint these walls. These walls looked this way when I moved in here. So now I'm gonna go paint them. Gotta give them my touch. All right, now, back to the assembly. Now y'all don't know what this thing is, okay? Cause the pictures don't tell me nothing. They don't tell me nothing. The only thing I know is it's Oud. Whatever Oud is. But okay, we'll find out. So y'all gonna learn while I'm learning. So I was studying my Bible today and the past few days along a certain line. So I'm just there going to the book of Romans. So I went into the book of Romans and as I'm in the book of Romans, I've come across Romans 4, 5, and 6. Y'all, it looks like a small, I don't know, we'll figure it out. We ain't gonna make no conclusion. Now, it says to attach this thing. Okay, so here's one, two, oh, oh. okay, we'll figure it out. So as I'm in the book of Romans, yeah, I started studying along a certain line of certain things. And what I was studying was, you know, Jesus, hey, oh, the, the Apostle Paul in the Word says, how can we who have died to sin Continue to live in it. And, oh gosh, that's really small. So that obviously isn't it. He said, how can we who have died to sin live in it any longer? So that kind of woke me up and, oh, that explains why this thing is so short, y'all. Y'all know these little bags got numbers on them I did not see. Are we freaking serious? Okay, well that makes sense. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I didn't assemble it all the way and figure out. So it is bigger than what I thought it was. So, one. Two. Three. <laughs> four. Six. Hey, looks like I gotta reassemble this thing. Y'all don't look like it's gonna be too sturdy though. We'll find out. It looks like it might try to collapse pretty soon, whatever this thing is gonna be. I didn't order it, y'all, so I don't know what this thing is. Somebody, I just walked outside my apartment to go check my mail. Now I know what the address is, so where it came from, but I don't talk to that person no more. So y'all, sometimes you gotta cut that poison out your life. All right? Sometimes people are poison in your life, okay? And what I mean by that is, sometimes we hang out with the wrong people or we embrace the wrong people who don't encourage your desire to live righteously or they do, but they try to conform you to be who they think you should be. Instead of encouraging you and showing you how to embrace who God created you to be. And y'all, that's sad to say, that's what was going on with this person. Whose address this obviously went to. She did not support my desire. Oh, y'all, I see what it is. This is a wardrobe closet. I didn't know what it does. Idiot. See? Right there. Right there. Looks pretty good. But it don't look like it's going to be too sturdy, y'all. But we're going to find out, okay? But anyways, she didn't support my desire to just embrace being different. Something that the Lord, that I know that the Lord told me to do. She was so hell-bent on trying to force me to conform to her standards. 
or the standards she thought I should conform to, which is something I don't do. I don't conform to what you believe I should and should not be. If the word of God don't say it's wrong, we ain't got nothing to talk about. Sometimes, y'all, we got to stand on who we know we are in the Lord and not allow other people to dictate who they think we should be. We, we, you know, the Holy Ghost said through me one day, stop looking to other people and start looking to my son. Because, y'all, in reality, it's what Jesus said, who he says we are. That matters. Not what another man, woman, or person thinks. You know? And I'm learning that personally in my walk with the Lord. Because, like I said before, at one time, I was a people pleaser. Very much so. Y'all, I did everything I could to try to make everybody and their mama happy and was miserable trying to do it. I allow people to dictate my pace. I know it's sad, but it's true. When somebody's been love starved for so long and has been abandoned by their family and as a legal orphan as I am, and then you like, you, you, most people who've been through the trauma and the abuse that I've had to suffer through can relate. Sometimes you just feel like, you know, where everybody at? You know, I ain't got no family, so maybe I'll just go surround myself with friends or. Maybe I'll go surround myself with these types of people and then you get around the wrong types of people and then people's negative ways and behaviors begin to rub off on you and you begin to do things that you ain't supposed to be doing or things that you are never thought you'd do and God, thank goodness, I've never done drugs in my life ever. That is an absolute reality, y'all. I am not exaggerating. I think I smoked marijuana five times my entire life, and I'm 30, by the way, and I know about four times. I absolutely hate the feeling of being high. I don't get drunk. I don't think, I think I've only been drunk once my entire life. I absolutely hate the, absolutely hate the feeling of being drunk. It's not a pleasant feeling to me. I absolutely hate it. Um, but, yeah, so... She was trying to alter me and to be who she thought or desired me to be. And that's just something I wasn't willing to sacrifice to be. And so, you know, one day I'm walking down the street in cowboy boots. Her husband, who's the pastor of the church, decides to roll past me. Okay, when he's rolling past me, I guess he called her because they thought I was in heels. She gonna say, um, where are you going? I say, oh, I'm going to go run some errands. I got some things I got to take care of. And when I'm done taking care of that, I'm going to Sally's. Because I had to get some hair color. <laughs> Y'all know I'm a firm believer in wearing my hair color. I do it religiously. She said, oh, well, you want a ride? I knew y'all that she wanted to give me a ride because she wanted to see if I was in heels. Sure. Took the ride, got in the car with her, rolled around with her for a little bit. Well, I don't know if that was a good idea, but I did it. So we get out and she says, oh, you got you some cowboy boots, huh? I say, yes, ma'am. I sure do. And she was like, oh, I like him. I said, mm-hmm, I bet you do. You just only came this way to see if I was actually in heels or not. That's the only reason you came this way. You didn't want to come talk to me or hang out with me. So, but anyways, now, back to what I was saying. How can we hang out with the wrong people, y'all? We shouldn't be. Some people are poison. Some people are going to drag you down, cause you more stress more pain than what you actually need. So y'all be careful. Don't hang around. When you build a house, you start from the, the base up, right? Yeah. I started from the top. <laughs> well, at least we know the top is done, huh?
All right, let's flip it back over and finish the top, the top section then. How about that? I mean, I've already started, might as well. Um, okay, so something right here, y'all. Oh, that's the base. <gasps> I think I like it. No, I did it wrong. I was starting from the base. I'm happy, okay? Because uh, I didn't think I was. <laughs> but you know what? Let's just follow the steps. How about that? So, dude, where'd you go? I don't know. Ugh. There they are. The little feet. All right, let's put the feet on. Ooh, y'all, my back is killing me. Several, several years of competitive dance and gymnastics will do it to you. Y'all, I got these organic oils pulled up in my hair to, uh, I've been doing a growth, uh, I mix my own hot oil treatments. I actually thoroughly researched my product before I buy it. In fact, I come on YouTube to review product reviews or the oils that I use to see the benefits that other people have had. Then I go on Google and I research them to see what Google has to say about it. Um, after that, then I mix it together and I try it myself. But because I have high porosity hair, I can't just use any product. So with high porosity hair, I've given up creams and decided to stick solely to oil. And so I use organic oils. Um, I think I might do a review with you guys so you can see the oil I'm using. Well, no, nah, I ain't gonna tell you about the oil I'm using yet. But um, I am going to, you know, I might as well, huh? Might as well. Oh, great, um, put you on here wrong. But um, yeah. So I guess I'll tell you guys what oils I'm using and then, you know, tell you what my, what happens. I mean, shoot, if I can help you and y'all been helping me, I might as well tell you, right? So I'll tell you guys the mixes of oils that I use so that you can see. But that's for a later video. Right now we're assembling and talking about Jesus. So. As I was studying the word, the word, you know, I was in Romans 5, 6, and 7. And um, as I was studying, Paul says, For Christ died. Now, if Jesus died and we died with him, that means that the lives that we lived before are no more. So, as he was talking, um, see, I forgot a step already, but that's okay, because I'll just have to pull you apart to put it there. Look, y'all, the base. It don't look right.
room. We'll figure it out. Okay, so now, bang, these things. Cause I forgot to put it on. <laughs> anyway, so Paul says that we died with Christ, right? So that means that every nature that we inherited since Adam is no more. Meaning that if we died with Christ, that means if you suffered from depression, depression is no more. You died. You died to that. That is not of who you and what you are. If you, that, is, that was, may have been your identity, that's maybe something that you identify, but, but stop it, because it's not who God says you are. You are not a depressed person. Not anymore. You've been given life, joy, peace, satisfaction, grace, and favor. So, stop it. Stop identifying with depression. Stop identifying with the person you may have once been. That is no more. That person's gone. The memory of that person should be gone too. But except for the purpose of evangelism. And going out and telling the world about the things that you once did. Because sometimes people need to hear that, hey, we ain't perfect. We done made all kinds of mistakes. We done did all this mess. We done did all that mess and all this extraness. So, sometimes that's what we got to do, you know? So, as I was reading that, y'all know the life I lived before I came to Christ was I lived openly as transgender and homosexual. Not gonna lie, some people will never tell you that, but hey, I'm the brother, I'm a minister, I'm not gonna be sugarcoat nothing. I'm gonna give it to you in the ball. I'm gonna tell it like it is. Cause that's what look that's what y'all gotta do, y'all. That's what I do. I gives it to you in the ball, boo. So how can I, who have died with Christ? Continue to live. I'm not, but I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just giving you guys you know, a gift. All right? How can we, who have died to Christ, continue to live in sin any longer? All right, now, it's kind of sturdy, y'all. It's kind of sturdy. So basically, Paul is stating. If you was out there having sex before you got married and you ain't married right now, you need to stop it. How can you, who died with Christ, I mean, you don't just want to accept him and call out to him and then want to go out and just start, you know, no. See, I have a problem with many pastors, okay? They're selling Jesus like a ShamWow commercial, all right? They're not giving it to you in the raw. They say, all you got to do is believe. Yeah, that's true. But they're using the secular word belief. And the reason I say that is because if you study the context of scripture, you'll see that biblical belief has nothing just with men <clears throat> has nothing to do with just mentally agreeing that the Bible's true. Okay? Biblical belief is that... You say and look at the word and say, oh, this is God's standard. This is what he did for me. I believe it. Okay? Now, I realize that my sin is the reason he had to go through all the mess he went through. And I'm wrong for that. But because I realize God loves me so much and that he wants nothing but the best for me, I must be willing, out of my love for him, I desire to turn from this immoral immorality. I desire to just please him and love him and be good for him and take care to do all I know that is going to bring such peace to him. You know, when you fall in love with somebody, any of y'all out there that's fallen in love with anyone? Oh, man. When you fall in love... See? Really? That's how we gonna do me. <laughs> when you fall in love with somebody, right, and you've got a relationship with them, it's actually, quite frankly, easy 
to want to conform your life in a way that you know is best for you and best for the person that you're in love with. Jesus don't want slaves, y'all. He wants somebody he can share life with. Oh, y'all, I'm sorry, I'm mooning you. Let me turn. Jesus don't want slaves, y'all. He wants somebody he can share life with. And so in sharing life with you, he wants to love you. He wants you to learn to depend on him. He wants you to learn to come to him for counseling. It's like every best friend, y'all. Communication is key. Let me squat down. Communication is key. You got to spend time with them if you actually want to develop a love relationship with them. You know, you got to learn to spend time with them. If you want to love Jesus with all your heart, mind, and soul, y'all, it's like a relationship. It is a relationship, technically, because Christianity is not religion. Although we got many churches out here that are not classified as churches, they're religious organizations. They're taking scripture out of context, and they're coming up with their own formulas, their own ways, their own doctrines that are just not in agreement with you. With the rest of scripture. Um, there's just something that Christ actually spoke against with the Pharisees. He says, you go all through all this time to get a single proselyte. And when you get this proselyte, you make him even double a, double a child of hell than you yourselves are. Base. Base. Looks pretty good. I ain't finished yet. Still got work. He says, oh, when you do get a single proselyte, you make him devil a, a child of hell than you are yourself. Y'all, there's so many churches out here that won't allow you to minister or even become a member of their church if you don't wear certain dress clothes or um, if you don't wear your hair a certain way or certain things like that. And I mean, y'all, come on. Is that Christ? No, not at all. Jesus never designed us to, you know, there was no such thing as religious, you know, there was such thing as, as religious organization in his day. But that's not his plan nor his desire. Not at all. And yet so many in the churches of today, that's exactly what they're making it out to be. A religious organization. Something Jesus never wanted. And I think it's so sad, you hear me? That we can't come to church and embrace our exotic individuality in a righteous way. Okay, let me make sure I phrase that. In a righteous way without being condemned because we're not like others and we refuse to try to fit in to what they believe we should look, sound, and walk, and act, and dress like. You know, I don't look to celebrities to define my style. I don't look to anyone to define who I am or, you know, to define how I dress. I don't look to that. I just don't. I mean, there's no point in that because that's not me. That's not being authentically Yaya. And Yaya won't, you know, allow somebody else, not anymore, to define them. I know who my God says I am. I know who Eli says I am. And guess what? It's what my Eli has to say, y'all, that matters. And not what man has to say anymore. Because I'm not going to lie. I'm done. Allowing somebody else to define me. I'm done allowing their opinions to matter. Because in all actuality, their opinions don't matter. But I will state this. Sometimes we place too much emphasis on letting other people dictate our pace. Than we do on acknowledging the Lord. And allowing Him and His divine guidance to be the standards that we set or allow in our own lives. 
Y'all listen, we gotta stop letting other people and their opinions of us to matter, okay? We gotta look to the Lord because the reality is he's where our help comes from. He's the king of our lives, not man. Do you hear me? Not man. He rose and conquered that grave for us for a reason. So that we can learn to live to him. As, as Romans is stating that we are designed to live to him. Y'all know what? Let me read that scripture before I go on. So I can tell you where I'm speaking of. How about that? And I'm getting up off that floor, y'all, since I don't got to be down there no more. <laughs> I got to get up off the floor, y'all. Okay, come on, my little robot here. Move you over. Woo! Move the box over. <laughs> don't say nothing about my lighting. I ain't the one that's out here trying to get all kinds of popular. I'm just on here trying to speak the word. I don't care about popularity or fame or fortune. That don't matter to me. That's why I live in the humble abode that I live in. Because I'm satisfied with my God and what he's provided for me. Woo! Can you see me? Perfect. All right. Turn this this way as we continue to assemble. But first, let's read the scripture. How about that? Romans. Oh, uh, y'all, I don't have this amplified Bible since 2012, and I ain't getting rid of it. As you can see, it's well-worn. In 12 years, no, since 2012, I've probably read through this one specific Bible. Hmm, I read, well, 12, 2012 was five years and one, that and, and, you know, five times read through from beginning to end, so it's probably a whole lot more than five in 2012. Uh, probably like seven times in 2012 altogether. And then I slowed down in 2013 and started reading like four or five chapters a day just to keep that from happening. But in 2014, I went on a mission to study all the epistles uh, uh, very intimately. So for like an entire two years, all I did was read Romans all the way to Revelation for like an entire two years. And I can't tell you how many times I read all the way through that because there was a whole lot and I'm not even going to try to look back and to tell you that. But I was on an intimate study on that. All right. All right, what shall we say to all this? I really remain in sin in order that God's grace, favor, mercy may multiply and overflow. Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by the baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father. So, we too might habitually live and behave in newness of life. For if we became one with him by sharing a death like his, we shall also be one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life lived for God. We know that our unre old, unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body, which was an instrument of sin, might be ineffective and inactive for evil so that we might no longer live to be slaves for sin. For when a man dies, he is freed, loose, and delivered from the power of sin among men. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. Because we know that Christ, the anointed one, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. For by death he died. He died to sin, ending his relation to it once and for all. 
and the life that he lives, he is living to God in unbroken fellowship with him. So now, consider yourselves. He's also dead to sin and your relationship to it broken. But alive to God, living in unbroken fellowship with him in Christ Jesus. So, um, as you see, those scriptures speak about what? Relationship, correct? We are not called. I moved my tripod, which I bought on, uh, by the way. I told y'all, I'm a bargain shopper. I don't spend all that extra money if I don't absolutely don't have to. What's the point, right? There's no point. No, no, no. That money ain't yours. Give it back to him and let him use it. Trust me. He gonna supply all your needs and some. But, all right, back to what I was thinking. So, uh, I bought this tripod that my phone is sitting on, which is an iPhone. I bought it, and I, um... Oh, yeah. It ain't shaking no more. Perfect. So, um, I bought it at Wish for three dollars. Three dollars on Wish. It took like a week and a half to get here. A little, a little over a week. Just a little over a week. So, I bought that little tripod you're sitting on right now on Wish. It's lovely. Freaking love it. Um, anyways, so, as the word says, how can we, who have died to sin, live in it any longer? Great question, right? If you've died to, ooh, if you have died to a certain way of life by sharing in the death, resurrection of Christ, okay? Hmm. Y'all, I'm only on the second tier. There's another tier to this thing. Now, where in the world am I going to put it? I don't know. I might just assemble it and sell it. Post it on Facebook. Say, hey, y'all, I got this today, but I don't got the space for it, so I want to sell it. <laughs> I don't know who gave it to me, and I don't know where it came from. But guess what? If I don't need it, I don't keep it. I sure don't. If I don't need it, why keep it? Y'all, I'm not a hoarder. If I don't wear a certain, if I got some clothes in my thing that I'm just not wearing, they not staying in there. They gotta go. If it is sitting in my apartment and I ain't used it or touched it, it's gotta go. It's not staying in here. There's no point for it being here. Oh, that's nice, y'all. But the reality is, I don't got use for it. All right, guys. So uh, I'm going to tell you guys now, don't buy this. These little poles are supposed to be metal. But they're real flimsy. I see that I dented one already. So the reality is this may not even hold anything that it's supposed to hold. So I'm going to tell you guys it's a Y-O-U-U-D from Amazon. Whatever this thing is. I guess it's a wardrobe closet. Don't buy it. It's not worth your money. I'm just going to be frankly honest here. Now, if you guys want to buy it and then go buy wooden poles to insert in this thing to make it more sturdy, do it. But, y'all, I don't, I don't know. We don't advise it. I'm not, I'm doing a product review right now and I know I'm probably not supposed to. But y'all, look, this is so not worth your money. Again, it's the U, U, uh, U, why, no, Y, O, U, U, D from Amazon.com. Um, completely a waste of money. 
Uh, please don't buy it. It's definitely not worth it. Uh... Yeah, it's not working. I see that there's already two bent ones. Don't buy this, guys. They make it look all pretty and good, but, uh... No, I see a bent one there. I'm going to show it to you guys in a close-up so you can see that. And this is just during the part of assembly. No, y'all don't buy this. But we're going to still keep recording so that you can see the end result. And um, y'all, I'm so glad I'm not the one that purchased it. <laughs> I'm glad I ain't the one that purchased it. Hell yes, I'm so thank you, Jesus. Y'all see, I don't, I don't lie. I'm not going to hide nothing from y'all. Y'all heard that word hell come out my mouth? Yes, I'm sorry. But, y'all, look, I don't advise anybody to buy this little thing. I mean, it, like, look cute, but just because it look cute don't mean it's even worth it. But I'm going to show y'all the close-ups once I get this thing assembled so that you can see where it bends. Um, so you can see why I say I don't advise any of you guys to buy this. They do, I'm going to look up on YouTube, uh, Amazon, I think they have a shoe rack and another one that's super cute too, y'all, but listen, like I said, if you're not going to go buy wood beams that are, that are going to fit into these old plastic things, don't buy this. It's not worth your money. I'm sure I could have probably, I don't know how much she paid for it or where she got it from, but, uh. Mm-hmm. I really don't know. But I will state that she probably just wasted her money. That's okay. I'm about to sell it anyway, so I don't care. But, uh, y'all, we don't do the little the jipping people. We don't tell them the truth about this thing. This must be the <laughs> Good thing I got tile floors, y'all, right? <laughs> I will say that I absolutely hate carpets. Can't stand carpet. So I don't ever rent where anything has carpet. Because I hate it. I can't stand carpets. Um, so yeah. How can we, who have died to sin, continue to even endure, you know... Continue to attempt to live in it anymore. Listen, y'all need to study the word, okay? The word tells us and shows us what, for real, low battery? No. I had to plug my phone up. It was that. Y'all, I'm at 43 minutes. Okay. I guess I'll stop the video and then... Because I'm not, I don't alter it. I'm not going to come back and try to change this. So once I finish assembling, guys, then I'll come back and let you see it, okay? Holla. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to... You've already seen the structure. So this is going to be part one. And then after part one, I'll come back 